Hey, so you've probably been in this situation where you made a really cool geometry node setup and you're looking to add materials to it, but really how geometry nodes handles materials, you go set material, you put it in place, it's sort of disconnected from the material properties, like you can't just drop a material on it and it's gonna work. Like it becomes a very static process and I like working with material IDs. That's where you assign a number to the face and say, hey, I want you to be this material here. And having a bit of a play, I think I found a really nice solution with geometry nodes. I've got the asset browser here and just allows me to drag and drop my materials directly onto the objects I've set up with IDs. It's not very apparent, so let's get straight into it. So what magic is happening here and really is a geometry node setup. So when it comes to whenever I create a geometry nodes, I usually start with a basic plane. It's just the simplest of the geometry. So if you want to set one of them up, shift A and just select plane. And I just set up this map tutorial to demonstrate what's going on. My super fantastic geometry. But let's go inside the geometry nodes and see what's going on. So I've got this basic setup. I've got the original input there. I've got the join geometry. Now with generated geometry, it sort of doesn't work the way we want. We can't just drag and drop materials on there. And even if we went into the material properties, they're not going to assign. So we need some way to print that original geometry onto these nodes so they're sharing the same IDs and what I found is this is like the last step of the process so once you've joined all your geometries uh, then you can start doing this process but what I found this is a way I figured out is you come down here and imprint the geometry so you get that plane that's got the material IDs we can see it's got a material on there and then what we need to do is delete that original geometry somehow. So we're going to get the delete geometries node. That's going to delete everything. And then we need some way to make a selection. So this is with the uh, attribute system. So this is a way of storing and pulling information back in. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to go up to attribute and choose store named attribute and put it in between here. So what we're going to be capturing is the Boolean. So make sure you select that. All these other variables, the value, we want to turn that on because we are selecting this piece of geometry and I'm going to give it a very structured name. So make sure you use your capitals and copy the same information. So I'm going to say OG Mesh. So OG Mesh with capitals, just so I know camel case and all that. And if I come back up to selection, so I'm going to type in named attribute. There we go. This one sits under geometry and read. So we're pulling information from this column here. Like if I scroll down the bottom, as you can see, that quad has been selected. So I'm going to choose that from points here. And as you can see, it's deleted that mesh. And we have the geometry materials imprinted on these objects. So the next stage that we can do is if I just move this forward a bit and the other node that we're going to be working with is set material ID. So if I go set material index, there we go, IDs index. And if we bump that to one, as you can see, it's changed to blue because we have the blue material here. But that's applied it to all of them. So how do we go about making each one a separate entity? And we're going to use this store named attributes again. So I'm going to go shift D and put it in this line here. So what I'm going to do is name this Matt underscore ID. Just making sure you keep the names consistent. I'm just using these names because it's not affecting anything in Blender. And I want to switch that to an integer. So integer index, it's just a, like a single number and that's how we're assigning it. So I want to set this to material one. This uh, material IDs, they don't start at zero. That's where the default material. So we go one, two, three, four. So now I've got that set up. I'm going to shift D, put it at one there. We'll set that to two. Same thing again, shift D, put it there. Just get this out of the row, keep it nice and neat so people can read your geometry nodes. I'm going to set that to three. So what we need to do is do the same thing again. So we're going to use named attribute. We're going to set that integer. We're going to connect it up here. It's going to have a bit of a pickle about, but when we set our material IDs, Nothing has happened, but if we go back into the showcase and I drag onto maybe choose a different color, as you can see, it's going to start applying those material IDs. So if you're using geometry nodes to create a whole bunch of like 
maybe it's a table generator and you've got parametric modeling going there or you create some really fantastic artwork but you want to drag and drop it um, this is the way to do it and if you want to make sure it works in the asset browser like just make sure you remove all those materials because like as you saw it did try and apply the materials in the wrong spot if it's got no materials apply it's going to actually apply that material in the correct spot so this was just a tiny little video for a very big problem that i have because having material ids opens up a lot of possibilities for creating different variants on your models so you could be doing some artwork and you can just flip around and change some of the materials on the fly it's not hard programmed into the geometry node that was my biggest concern because now we have a lot more control of what's going on using blender systems to make our materials and having it being able to drag and drop on like that saved me countless hours so i hope you did enjoy this one and if you did like it definitely give it that thumbs up because it does point this to other people people are probably stuck in this like being able to assign material ids to their uh geometry nodes and as well is I do glaze over a few different topics, so if you've got any comments or queries, please feel free to leave them down below. It does help out, and I do go down there to chat about these types of things. And really, I hope you did enjoy this one, and I'm starting to get a bit of Blender content, so if you want to stick around and see this type of work, you know where that button is, and I look forward to seeing you next time.